What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bellcast. I'm Bart. I'm Gio. Hi. Well, that's wonderful. Well, it's wonderful. Your voice. Thank I love you. hearing your voice, especially in my earmuffs. Nice. Yeah, it does sound really nice when you're wearing headphones. I just, I don't like it. Oh, you know else what I don't like? What? California. <laughs> just kidding. That was really good. So I get a lot of comments, uh, um, obviously on YouTube and on Instagram, on like, what are you, why, why are you guys leaving California? Are you guys moving to Vegas? What, 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 what yeah, the they're hell? like, you What's just, you just found your forever home. Yeah. So like, I guess we kind of want to, um, you know, we're, we're a giant family. So we kind of want to share our entire thought process with you guys on um, why we want to leave California in the first place and how we arrived at Nevada and just kind of share like some of our own, I guess, like thought process. Yeah. I want to share my thought process to share my thought process of our thought process. Of With the, the thought it. process. Yeah. And the first one, the first, the biggest reason why we're leaving California is because we get Weekly human feces. <laughs> Weekly human feces <laughs> on our house. <laughs> you <a> cutie. <laughs> you fucking asshole. It's not weekly. Okay, so this is this is why I find that so funny. Like, we bought our house in this beautiful city called Glendora. It's super suburby. Some of the best schools. Yes. The houses are really far apart. It feels just like a 90s movie. When it's Christmas, everyone decorates their house beautifully. There's you a have, strip in, in the in the in our city that like the whole community comes to just watch the tree lighting yeah. ceremony. And I'm like, who the fuck does that? Yeah. But that's a family it's town. It's very communal. Yes. Like it's it's like it's like one of those like cities that come together. Like uh, like all the people go to the high school football games because they love their high school so yeah. much. It's like one of those cities. And so we thought we found the perfect city, which is why in our vlogs from a few years ago, we're like, cool, we found a forever home. And because it's such a nice home, such a great city, we dropped some fat cash on it and it's a million dollar home. So uh, we spent a million, uh, over a million bucks on it. And we spent uh, almost a quarter million on just the backyard and the front yard, put a pool. Like it was, we were meant to stay here. Like our plans were to stay here for like 30, 40 years. And then uh, people like the dookie on our house. <laughs> <laughs> and we just don't like dookie so because of the, du the no dukes rule that we like set when we first got together yeah we have to leave and now we're not just moving the, out of the city it was just too stinky there's just too many dukes yeah we're trying to move uh we're no one dukes we're, we're no one dukes so uh i mean that i mean obviously that that's a joke but that is like one of the many things that i think for us one of the biggest reasons why we even started to think about leaving california is not seeing our taxes manifest into benefits yes yeah absolutely like where the fuck is our money going <laughs> that's exactly the thing right <laughs> what's going on like we we so in california if you guys don't know and obviously we're not super tax accounting gurus or financial experts or anything we're fuck just no we're just speaking from a family planning point of view um california does have the highest state income tax rate across we're the nation. number one we are number one right <laughs> so if you're just talking dollar for dollar, it makes the most sense if California had the best schools, the best roads, the best. No homelessness. No homelessness. The best everything. Maybe the best, uh, the, maybe the highest minimum wage or I don't know, just like all like the best, the best everything. Right. But we don't. We have a lot of other states that are paying less, um, offer way more. And I think that the biggest thing that Cali has going for it is for sure the weather. It's really beautiful year round. But when we start and then even with that, like the temperatures are increasing like crazy. It's like in the it was like over 100 for like three weeks straight. And then we have fires all the time when um, if you look at our mountain ranges, it's the same mountain range that goes from California all the way up to like Oregon, Washington and even into Canada. But the other states and even Canada takes a preventative measure to these fires that form. We don't. So there's just like. We're like, why, why, why are we spending all this money? Why are we paying California like, quote unquote, 13 bucks to get nothing, to have potholes in every single road when there's other states that you pay less and it's cleaner and it feels better and um, they're more business friendly. And so that's when we started to really zero in on some of the zero state income uh, tax states because those guys, they like offer a lot. Like Texas is one of them. Like they offer a lot 
for you don't for you to just live there and be a yeah. part of their community. Yeah. Um I like that you opened up with the shitting story yeah. because that that so yes it's funny and we were kidding but kind of because what's happening right now is there's so much homelessness and there is no programs out there that that to help them. Yeah, to help at all. And th there's a lot of overcrowding. There's just there's just no solutions being offered at all. So if you go back to downtown LA, it looks like it did like 20 years ago. Like 20 years ago, everyone in in L.A. was so scared to go to the sketchy part of town known as downtown L.A. And yeah. then as of recently, they've been doing a lot of gentrification, a lot of like facelift. They've been really like up in the valley of that area. But once, you know, this lockdown happened, things just kind of went up in flames and the homelessness got just as bad as it did 20 years ago. Yeah. So because it's so bad and there's not enough police force, uh, what's happening is they and this is fucking horrible that they do this but i heard this from insiders that what they do is they get insiders th from people that are in both police departments that she's about to share yeah so what they do is when they when they have uh homeless people that are just causing a ruckus they put them on a train they pay for their fare they put them on a train and they send them all the way down they just they just put them on a train so that they they can leave they that send area. them to the suburbs yeah they're like yeah. pretty much we're downtown LA police. Get out of our city. You're yep. someone else's problem. Exactly. And then the people in our city were like, well, they need to send these people back. So we're like, okay, we pay the highest amount of state income tax. And this is the solution. This is how you guys feel like you're going to help homelessness just by sending people yeah, back just and going, forth. Yeah, just playing ping pong. Yeah. And then we're getting them in our city. Which I'm like, I don't mind if we have if we have programs in place, but we're finding needles in our community. We're finding human feces in our community. And it's like, wait, why is this happening? Like, this is horrible. Like, like you said, why are we paying a premium? And there and, and we're treating our fellow man this way. Like, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. So, like, one thing that's really cool about our city is um, they we don't have to recycle in our city because they take all of our trash to the city dump. And then they'll sort the trash there. And with the recycling money, they allocate all of those funds into helping uh, homelessness, like uh, find shelter and help people get back on their feet, which is freaking awesome. So I don't know, maybe if they could take Glendora City Department and have them run all of California. That'd be awesome. But unfortunately, we don't pay the Glendora City tax. We pay the California state tax. Right. Yeah. So like that's one of the, the sad parts is we moved. 30, 35 minutes away from the big city so we don't have to deal with any of like the big city issues like traffic or um, like the homelessness where we want to be able to walk with our kids on the street without finding dookie and needles or like people that like are uh, um, that obviously need mental help and grandma doesn't feel safe walking around like there's just so many issues that have zero solutions when we're paying the biggest bucks in yeah. those taxes. Yeah. So those were the two big ones for me. Another wor a reason for me was what you just mentioned, the traffic. traffic. Like what in the fuck is going on? Like, I think the best traffic I ever saw or like the, the, the time that the freeways felt the most normal, like it should be this way was during lockdown. Like I could probably count maybe 20 cars in front of me. And I'm like, Oh shit. I remember the days when it used to be this way. Yeah. Like what happened? Yeah. Like, I didn't even know we could house these many people. Yeah. So for us, it's like, okay, if we pay the most, maybe we have better roads, wider roads, more roads. If not that, better and more public transportation. Yes. But we don't have either of them. And then when we were during the lockdown, um, I remember I'm like, wow. So this is what the other states feel where they just get to just drive wherever they want. And then the minute they started opening back up, then they started construction. I'm like, who is managing this state? Like when we, when you guys know that we were going to be locked down for three months, that would have been the perfect time to start construction and all the roads, fix all the roads, widen the roads, could do that, though. widen the freeways. Well, I don't think they could do that because Why? we were in a global pandemic. We didn't know this virus. So you're not going to put people on the workforce when we don't know how this thing's getting. No, spread. because uh, so. Even then, there was the essential workers. Construction has always been part of the essential workers. And I have seen entire commercial uh, real estate in places 
continuously construct and build during this whole process and be developed during the whole process. I see. Right. So I'm like, obviously, it's not illegal and they have their own measures and they're considered essential workers to push forward. So I'm like, why? Um, it's just mismanagement, you know, like they're not doing a good job of scheduling and timing. Like now when we're back on the roads, now you guys think it's a good idea to fix the roads. So now we have extra traffic. It's yeah. insane. And like, so when we go to other states, like even uh, when we went to go check out the home in Vegas, I think it was like 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Our realtor was even like, hey, I'm so sorry that there's traffic right now. I'm like, you call this traffic? <laughs> we're like driving 55, 60 miles an hour on the freeway. I'm not... Sometimes our traffic's so bad, I can turn I can turn my car off and chill for five minutes. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, you call this traffic? And you know you're in California or you're talking to someone in California when they tell you where they're going via minutes. No one else does that, right? Like you go to, I don't know, Wyoming. Oh, how far away is the McDonald's? Oh, about seven miles. Because seven miles actually means something. It means I'll get there in like 10, 15 minutes. Like everywhere else, it means something. Where it's places with bad traffic, you don't even bother telling them the miles. You tell them in minutes. Oh, they're a 45 minute drive. Yeah. And they go, well, how far away is it? And it's like, it's actually like 12 miles. And you're like, it takes 45 minutes to go 12 miles. So we just go by minutes because that's how far it takes to get places. Right. And then um, another thing that I was just like, damn, this sucks. Why is California doing this? Is from is more from a small business perspective where it's like, I didn't feel supported throughout this whole lockdown. I didn't feel like my my governor or anyone in my city was looking out for the best interest of just business, like small business owners, right? Like I, like, I don't know, just a lot of the way, like the things that they were putting out there just didn't make sense for me. It's like, you're going to allow, like there's a bunch of memes online right now where it's like, okay, wait, so you're going to allow people to travel on the airplane. And there's a ton out there where you don't see them really socially distancing. It's like you wait before you board an airplane. You have to wear a mask. And you're six That's feet cool. apart. Yeah, you're six feet apart. And you're but a stickler then, to that too. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Stay six feet away. But then as soon as you get on the airplane, it's like. Um, Everyone's jam packed. Yeah. In there. I'm like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? Like, like what, how are you? What's the regulation? What's the here? logic behind that? So that's like a, a small one. Um, well, going to your small business point. Like, um, I don't know if it's just California has too many people for the governor to be able to have an effective job. Because I'm sure he's trying his best, right? But maybe it's like one of those things where a teacher, the max is 30 to 30 students. You know, maybe the, even the best teachers with now 200 students is too difficult. So maybe the, govern, the governor of California is trying his absolute best, but we just have too many people, too many different types of neighborhoods with too many different beliefs. Like for example, in in downtown, I believe we do need the most safest and strictest measures because we have a ton of people in uh, downtown. Like the city pretty much never sleeps. When we used to live in downtown LA, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you still hear cars, you hear people. It's it's almost like, like Vegas or New York. Like the city literally never sleeps. So if there's that much traffic, I get it. Shut everything down. We can't afford uh, to not be safe. But just moving like every 10 minutes out of the city, it's a different environment, you know? Like for us, uh, we live out in Glendora. We're pretty much more Riverside culture and more Riverside traffic than we are LA. So like some of the mom and pop barber shops don't need to be shut down that hard or the streets don't need to be shut down that hard. I think there needs to be a little bit more... Uh, troubleshooting and more specific troubleshooting and also like with our own gym they just lumped us in with like a 24-hour LA fitness like a global gym that has thousands and thousands of members with showers and saunas and spas and like spin classes where there's like hundreds of people sweating in the same room like our gym has two giant bay doors with constant air going through it's pretty much like a, a big metal and wood concrete tent with two sides open, right? That's what it really is. And so I think that's also why there's so many mom and pop gym owners that are pissed because like they don't have big funding. Like we don't have big funding. We don't have investors. So to shut us down like that, it's really hard. Like every month rent still due, but now we don't have, we can't make 
any money and it's not like the government will bail us out or anything like that. Well, I mean, they did put forth the PPP stuff, right? And there are different types of loans, but they take fucking forever and they're so slow to respond. And I, I mean, maybe it's just understaffed. Of course, nobody knew that shit was coming. I get it. But I'm like, we pay the most. Yeah. Like, is this a mismanagement of money? Like, yeah. is it like we're not using the resources properly? Like, what the fuck is going on? Why are we not prepared for shit like this? Yeah. So going back to our my example of like, OK, we pay California 13 bucks and we go 13. Here's 13 bucks. Help us, help us, help us. When other people are paying two bucks. Yeah. And, the, five and bucks, then you see how nimble, no bucks. how nimble other people are or other states are. And you're like and we see like our exact people in, in our exact field. They're able to open up under these conditions like. Obviously, we all want to be safe. Obviously, we want to control the spread of COVID. But having one giant blanket rule is never the right way, right? Well, like, like one, there's never one solution to a hundred different problems. So, um, for us, like that's how we feel like we were unsupported in our business. Yeah, and then every state has a protection level that's completely different, right? California is known to be one of the more protective states. And they tend to be a little bit more sensitive when it comes to comes to these matters. And for that's, good for good reason, because I think we have a giant population compared to some of the other states. For sure. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. And if if you're cool with that, then this is for you. This city is for you. Yes. But it's dope to know that there's options. There's dope to know that you can curate your own lifestyle the way you want to, right? So like if your state isn't treating you right, it's really cool to know that you can move to another state. If your country isn't allowing you to live the lifestyle that you want. It's also cool to know that you can move out of the country and create that life for yourself. Like, I just don't like people ever being like, these are my circumstances. That's it. I'm going to just fucking pout the whole time and I'm just going to hate it, but I'm going to stay here. Like, that's one of the most beautiful things about America is I think when the founding fathers created the constitution and constructed this nation, they had the vision of a place where people with different needs and different pursuits of happiness can all coexist. So I think we're one of the rare places where we have one country, but 50 different states, all with different laws and all with different tax benefits. And you can literally like with your own two feet, you can choose the life you want to live. You know, if you're like, hey, you know what? Because of the great weather, I'm down to pay the extra 13 bucks it's or even it. go to Hawaii. They're, they're cheaper than California. I, pay, I think they're like eight or nine. All the Hawaiians percent. right now. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, don't, come here, don't come here. Don't come here. Don't come here. But like you want the most uh, you want to live in paradise for extra eight or nine bucks. Go ahead. Or there's some states that you pay zero bucks or, or anything every in between. Like so tax benefits, geography, weather, resources, resources. Like, you know, we know Silicon Valley is where tech is. If you go to uh, uh, Texas, there's some like oil towns. We know Hollywood is where all the films get made. Like every single state and city, they all have their own industry, Wall Street. Their I own feel draw. Like, yeah, their own draw. You like finances. You like hot Cuban ass. You go to Florida. You know, there's all oh, so many what different beautiful industries out there that you can, <laughs> you know, you could whatever attracts you. You know what I mean? You can go. If you want the fat Cuban. Okay, shut <laughs> up. Sandwich. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you love Cuban <laughs> ass witches, you can. You want to be a, you want to be sandwiched between two beautiful Cuban butts. You can go to Florida. You can literally go wherever you want. And um, what's crazy is like you know when you grow up in California, like you're such a ride or die LA person. That was me, dude. Yeah, you never think about wait, that was an option, or you never think about wait, is this? What those old geezers wanted us to do. That's how you know you're old, really, because it now it's affecting us. Yeah. Like it's really hitting us directly. Like I don't think my mom, who's retired, is really feeling it the way I am. Yeah. Because she just her lifestyle is different and California fits her lifestyle right Au now. Oh, contraire. So we were talking with our accountant, and your retirement, depending on which state you go to, you also get taxed differently. Oh. So she would actually get even more out of her retirement by living in Nevada or Texas. Yeah, but she doesn't need to just because yeah. she's she's pretty set. Like yeah. my parents had a really good financial plan. They own several properties. Like they're good. Yeah, she's and good. and that and that's her choice, right? Right. I think for us, like growing up living in uh, L.A., where it's the place that other people move to, you never move out. I think um, we never really consider that you can actually choose your life with your own two feet. And then yeah. this was the first time we we're like, man, like the place that we live isn't this 
beautiful facade that we thought it is because we constantly well, for, pay for this, our lifestyle for our for lifestyle. what we want yeah yeah and i'm only speaking from us from our family personal yeah. point of view like we're constantly paying this extra 13 bucks and at least the way that we want to live it doesn't seem like we're benefiting from it yeah so i think those were like the main points for me at least it was taxes traffic homelessness um just the way the, the government, government yeah. is handling so how it supports its businesses yeah, like our small businesses and stuff it but just, even with like the traffic like there's definitely lifestyle consequences like i love the gym right so obviously i um i love to train but for me to get to the reason why i even have to wake up like at four or five a.m to go train is to avoid traffic and the reason why i can't stay at gym too late is to avoid traffic coming back so like I think growing up in LA, you're so used to that, that you're already like out of the 24 hours out of my day, kind of primed. I always already throw two to three hours away to traffic, you know? And then I think just as like things started stacking up, I started to go, wait, wouldn't it be nice to get those two to three hours back in my day? Like if we lived in Vegas, cause we actually visited a lot, I would immediately get two extra hours uh, by moving to Vegas. I would get two extra hours of my life back every single day that I could spend with my family or hobbies or whatever and not have to be stuck in a car just because they don't have the traffic issues that L.A. has. Yeah. And then the final cherry on top. Well, there was two cherries on top. The f- Ooh, one of the, what a the wonderful first, dessert. Yeah, the first cherry on top. So I'll say the whipped cream. Which one's the cherry? Okay, the whipped cream, because I don't want two cherries. I only whipped want one cream cherry. Is a ch- yeah, so I want the whipped cream and then there's a cherry on top. So Ooh, the yeah. whipped cream on top yeah. and before the cherry. What do you look first? What do I lick for? I eat the cherry first. Oh, I love that you way you said that. Okay. Uh, so the whipped cream on top was during this pandemic and the lockdown, we realized we don't need to have the office space because we're able to do the same amount of work. We're very productive via remote Zoom. Yeah, virtual meetings. Yeah, Skype virtual meetings. Yeah. So we're like, oh shit. Okay, so we're already gonna save money because our lease is almost up on this office. So just a heads up, you're gonna see a different space. Who knows when, but yeah, so it's almost up. Uh, so we're like, oh shit, we can save money on this. And people still feel comfortable because we don't know when we're going to go back to any sort of normalcy yet. So we're like, okay, cool. That's the whipped cream on top. So if we were to move, everything stays the same. Like nothing really changes. And then the cherry on top. Uh, now I forgot because I started thinking about the fucking <laughs> cherries. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's cool is so the house that we got in. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. I got it. Sorry. 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 It's because I just I think I'm hungry. Uh, so now the cherry on top. And this wasn't one of the biggest catalysts that made me want to move. But once everything else was on the table, cherry on top comes in. It's you get more money. You get more out of your money in Vegas. Yeah. So our house, we spent over a million. And honestly, for the house that we have, in other states, that house is probably worth five hundred to seven hundred thousand. Yeah, it's easy. About, yeah, brand new, maybe closer to the seven hundred because it was built in twenty eighteen. Now the property that we're getting in Vegas is now it looks like it's worth the million bucks. Yeah, like it looks like it. Yeah. You know, and and I don't mean to share that to be like, oh, look at me, look at me. No, I'm just, I'm just, I really just want to just so give throw you guys, some concrete numbers so you get yeah, an accurate to give picture. You, to give you some perspective because, um, yeah, we're just not those people that give a shit about being flashy. But I just want to really just put, put out there like what you can get for your money. So that for me was a cherry on top where I'm like, holy shit. Like, not only am I saving more money, but now my money goes further out here yeah so like the average um i think home price in the country is between 300 to 400 grand the average price in california brother is between 600 to 700 grand but to realistically live in la it's like 700 grand for maybe a 1500 square foot house and i had a friend that just visited from iowa and i was like hey like um What's the average plot of land? And he goes, Oh my goodness. Um, he's like, if you just graduated college and you just started like work. Five acres. No, he was like, it's it's about a third of an acre. Um, but most people have half to one acre. And then I'm like, uh, the average starter home here is probably like five to six thousand square feet. And he was like, Oh, we don't even use square feet on the outside because that's just way too small of a measurement. Like we only go by acres. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, that's 
crazy. Like the reason why we even go down a square, like square feet is meant to talk about the inside of the house. Yeah. But we use it for the outside of the house because even the plots of land are just way smaller. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reality, folks. Yeah. So for us, I think with the home, um, what happened? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Because uh, <laughs> you keep cutting me <laughs> oh, off. Oh, sorry. I'm I sorry. I keep trying to go. Maybe I talk too slow. And no, you, go ahead. you hear a pocket of silence. Fine. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. So that's that for me. Was, that's the reason why. I, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, yes. Yeah, so that's the reason. Those are my reasons. I'm pretty sure those are, are those all your reasons. Um, I actually, I don't think we did a good listicle job like a lot of YouTubers do. I think we're just having a conversation. So I don't even know. Maybe. Well, okay. So it was taxes. Taxes for sure. Homelessness. Is a big thing. Traffic. Traffic. Uh, and then no, not, feel, no, not feeling supported by the no state. No small business. Yeah. Support. Yeah. And then your buck, your money goes farther. Yes. So that, 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 that money thing where the dollar spent in California, your cost of living is just so high because of, um, so there's a forced minimum wage. Got another one. So there's a forced minimum wage and um, w which means it drives the. So there's there's a it's great because now entry level jobs get to make way more. Right. That's what it looks at least step one. But then the chain of events that happens. So like if someone that works at a burger joint like McDonald's makes 15 bucks an hour. That's going to for them to make money, especially with California property taxes. Them being the business owners? Yes. OK. Now that burger is going to now be, I don't know, 15 bucks. Yeah. You know, so like everything scales that way. Yeah. So um, when and when things scale, it hurts the people with the least amount of money because they can't be flexible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like for someone that has like millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, the difference between. $10 burger, $5 burger, or 15, maybe even up to a $30 burger might not affect them that much. But when things scale up, like a $15 burger can price a college student out of a meal in California. Right. So it's just the cost of living is so high. The cost of like the sales tax is really high. The property tax is high. The minimum wage is high. Um, and then well, the cost of one. housing, the cost of housing is also high. So pretty much like with the same amount of money that you spend here, you can't buy much in California, which is what makes um, other states like Nevada and Texas so much more attractive. Well, I'm glad that you're on that topic because another one that I wanted to mention that it just came to me was the fact that it's fucking difficult to open up a new brick and mortar business out here because the red tape and all the fucking restrictions and everything that they ask of you, it's like it's almost if you don't have a big like big capital to start a business, it's really fucking hard. Yeah. Because it's like, remember when we wanted to start our gym, right? Like we needed, depending on the square footage that we were going to rent and how many people could fit, like the capacity of that, we needed to have X amount of parking spaces. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we saw this really dope, affordable, maybe 10,000 square foot warehouse that was that we could probably get. But it only had like eight to ten parking spaces. But because it, it's in an industrial, it's a it's zoned in an in industrial area. There was so much street parking, like it was a ridiculous amount of street parking. But because we didn't have marked parking spaces, we needed to have something ridiculous, like 50 spaces or something like that. Yeah. And we were like, wait, but city, look, there's all these other spaces. There's an empty lot here. Like if we can make it work. And they were like, nope. They're like, uh, you have to have X amount of spaces. You have to have X amount of exits and opens and all these things. And we're like, holy shit. So we had to downsize significantly because we needed to have those parking spaces. Yeah. And if and speaking of California, like, you know, I was talking about like the plots of land is how, how jam packed we are. Like, how do you how can we even have those parking spaces if we don't even have the overall space? Yeah to even begin with, they don't right? Care. So what kind of sucks too is like with all the rules and regulations that are put out there, if you drive through downtown LA, there are so many, and this is sad, there's so many unused spaces um, that are just abandoned because of the rules and regulations. No business can just come up and flip it and get back on its feet. No. So you have so much underutilized space. I wouldn't say that California um, uh, doesn't have space. Oh. We do have space. It's just underutilized because the rules itself prevents that space from being used. Yeah. And listen, I, I can't stress this enough. I fucking love California. I never could imagine myself ever leaving here. My roots are here. My family's here. Just the thought of me having to leave 
my normalcy behind yeah. is is kind of devastating for me, you know? Like it's sad because it's like my mom's not coming with me. My best friends aren't coming with me. It, it just doesn't fit their lifestyle and they don't see a need to do it yet. And I'm like, fuck, man, like I'm starting. Like I hate it. I yeah. hate that it has to come to this. Yeah. But I have to think, you know, for I have to think 5, 10, 20 years down the line and how I want my life to look, how I want Taika's life to look. Maybe future kids' life to look. What if something more crazy happens in California or in the U.S.? Like, I want to have enough capital to support my friends and family if I need to. So, like, there's a lot riding on this decision right now. And trust me, like, the last thing I ever wanted to do was leave my home because this is my home. Like, I know the ins and outs of L.A. Like, this is my shit, you know? So, after all of these things that we saw, we're like, fuck, I think we have to make the move and the the few places that we looked at, it wasn't just Las Vegas. We considered, we considered Texas, and within Texas, we considered Austin. <laughs> Can we start talking about uh, Nevada a little bit? You're gonna interrupt me again. Well, Thank you. you. You did the thumb point. I thought you were like popcorn bar. No, I was. I'm like right. We considered Texas, Austin, Austin Houston, Dallas. Yes, we considered all of those. Yep. At the same time, we also considered Nevada, e- even Idaho too, and Utah. Uh, Idaho and Utah, but those were like small stints of like a consideration. Yeah. Because, um, well, why didn't we go with those? Can I talk now? <sighs> Fine. <laughs> so let me hold your hand. <sighs> I love you. So uh, so this is our thought process just to walk you guys through. So I think we started off very conversationally kind of with like the gripes that we have with California with paying like such a high um, tax and not seeing and seeing all the problems that have existed for like the last 35 years of our lives here. So that's the problem, right? So for us, because we like to be problem solvers and we like to think of our future. So now it comes to considering the possible solutions. So, um, and out of those possible solutions, we're looking for a place with one that really, su- uh, where the government really supports businesses um with very safe communities because that's we're still that's still what we're looking for and with low income tax and low traffic so pretty much all the gripes that we have with california high tax traffic homelessness um neighborhoods going going bad and traffic did i say traffic yes twice fine and then oh the government not supporting um the businesses we want the exact opposite on on these things so that's when we started to look at idaho utah nevada and texas um but now comes personal preferences so i'm a huge foodie geo likes to tag along with me well i'm a huge family person okay so just a huge family person so for me like having all kinds of diverse ethnic cuisine is really really important so as beautiful as utah looks as beautiful as Idaho looks. If I'm not I, a fan of snow either, by the way. If I am. But if we can get delicious kimchi within a 20 to 15 to 20 minute drive, I can't. It ain't for me, baby. That ain't, come, ain't for me. So that X is out Idaho and then Utah. Because we actually have friends that move there too. So now we're with uh, Nevada and Texas. Texas. And with Texas, um, we were in the middle of booking an appointment to Austin. Austin looks really beautiful. Houston has a ton of great food. And then Dallas is a super clean city. Kind of reminds me of Irvine, which is like very communal and suburby, which is what we're looking for. But because we still have businesses in L.A. Well, and my family's here. That was my biggest one. Yeah, and your family's here. When we were trying to book flights, we constantly had to uh, take into consideration uh, into consideration the time zone difference. Well, we were booking, we were considering booking these flights so that we can look at properties out there. Yes, properties. And then we wanted to also do it in a way where it would mimic like actual workflow. So we were trying to do same day flights, like go there, do some stuff, come back. And we just couldn't do it with the time zone difference. So like to land in Texas at 2 p.m., I pretty much had to like, we had to be at the airport at like 6 a.m. already. And then, so when we're organizing the babysitter to come back, it was like the time was also off. And in that way, and we're forever to jump on a phone with business. We jump on the phone um, at like three and then you call like, or in California at three, you call Texas and they're already closed. So it's just too much. Um, what is it called? Like the ends didn't really meet. So that kind of narrowed it down to Nevada and in Nevada, Las Vegas specifically, there are a ton of communities and that's where we kind of really just like zoned in and looked at all the cities. And there's this very beautiful city called Summerlin and it's brand new. Um, and it's master plan has a lot of 
really good schools. And I would say like one of the things that really draw, uh, drew us to Las Vegas and made us not have to look anywhere else, it's um, from where we're gonna live, it's 20 minutes to an international airport, which in LA we already don't have. Like it takes us an hour to get to LAX. The second thing is it's 20 minutes to the literally the best food in the world. Like there's a ton of Michelin star restaurants and there's also a giant Chinatown and Koreatown. So we can get all our kimchi. We can get all the Asian food that we want. Um, we love nature and it's 20 minutes to Red Rock Canyon. And also I think 45 minutes to Mount Charleston. So there's like nature. We, we go, love going on hikes and uh, it's 20 minutes to the strip. If we wanted to have a night out of town, if we want to watch Bruno Mars play or if we want to watch boys to men play, they're playing there like literally every week, you know, so we could become homies with them. Usher's going to have residency out there. Yeah, Usher's, we could, you know, so like for, for us, I think like the amount that Las Vegas had to offer and Las Vegas does have like this stigma of being like Sin City. But when you actually go there and you check out all the suburbs, you're like, oh, wait, there's actually a ton of normal cities that's outside of the strip. The strip is only maybe like 10 percent of Las Vegas plus Henderson. Yeah. Um, so for me, when I was considering when we were having the conversation about, you know, actually entertaining moving to Texas, I was actually forward in the beginning because I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And then you hear Austin's kind of becoming the second Hollywood. And there's like a lot of artists and creative people are moving out there. there yeah. So I'm like, oh, shit, that might be something cool. And we have a lot of friends in you know, all sprinkled around, sprinkled throughout Texas. So I'm like, oh, that'll be tight. But yeah, like the time zone difference was was one that I'm like, oh, shit, that might be difficult because we're still going to have to fly back for JK. But the main, main, main one for me was like, what if an emergency happens? Yeah. Like my mom's still going to be out here. My whole family is still going to stay out here. And for me to come and meet them in case of an emergency, I have to wait at least six hours. Like they're gonna have to wait for me at least a minimum of six hours. Coming from Texas? Coming from Texas. Probably more, maybe even like eight, depending on if it's Houston, where it's super oh, east. Oh, right, okay, maybe eight. 12, eight maybe. To, oh, fuck, okay, keeps getting bigger. It's just gonna be half a day that, <laughs> you know, they're just gonna have to wait for me. And I'm like, holy fuck, that really made me nervous. And it was just kind of, I felt unsettled. So because of that, that quickly just left my brain. Like I probably entertained it for maybe a good week or two. Uh, and it wasn't until you were trying to book our flights. It was to, pissing me the fuck off. Yeah, because you were already talking to a real, real, we move really quickly, you guys. But we were already talking to a realtor out there and he was already setting up a schedule for us to look at several houses in a day because we really wanted to maximize our day. But in the booking process, Bart was like, fuck this shit. I can't. It's a waste of fucking time. We're not doing it. And I'm like, perfect. I already felt that way anyway. Yeah, I was like, if this, if it's this hard to look at houses, imagine how hard it would be to fly back and forth going to meetings and all that stuff. Yeah. And then just intuitively, I just it always felt like the best decision to go to Vegas just because I'm a little bit more familiar with Vegas. I've yeah. been going there ever since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Just because my parents uh, loved going to the strip. They liked playing slot machines and doing all that shit. And back in the day, too, it wasn't very family friendly. I remember I like to this day, I have like a pretty bad image of Vegas because every time we would go there, we would just have to wait in the lobby like while our parents would switch off and watch us as the other one played, you know, mm. and I never really had a cool experience with it. I'm always like, fuck, is this for adults? And I don't like this adult shit. I don't really care about drinking and getting plastered. I don't care about clubbing. I don't care about gambling. Like it was just a waste of time for me. Yeah. I did, it didn't make sense. But with the recent years, their motto is no longer what stays here, what happens here stays here because it's meant like that at least was meant to entice a younger, more rowdy crowd because it's like you can do like it's Sin City. You can do yeah. whatever you want and shh, yeah. no one hears about it. And and recently they've been rebranding. I forgot what their new motto is, but it's very family friendly. Like there's a there's lot of entire casinos that don't even have slot machines anymore. Yeah. And it's there's no more smoking yeah. in, in certain areas. So it's very, very family friendly. Of course, there's still people out there on the strip fucking passing out the nude girl shit and all that yeah. stuff. But like and Bart I appreciate mentioned, them too. Fine. Like Bart mentioned, though, the, the Cuban booties. No, oh. uh, the strip is like we're going to be like 30, 40 minutes away from it and like a real 30, 40 minutes. Not like if we lived in L.A., 30, 40 minutes would probably be like two hours, honestly. Uh, so then, yeah, intuitively, it just felt better because, like I said, I, it's familiar. It's familiar to me. And I know if shit hits the fan in terms of an emergency with my family, I can jump in a car and within like, if I'm driving and hauling ass, I could probably get here two and a half, three, three hours. If I'm taking my time, four hours. So like just the accessibility to my family, I felt really, really good. And 
again, emergency, I catch a plane, maybe an hour. Yeah, I think that's that, that feels very assuring where if it's only like four hours away, then, you know, the airlines even shut down during this whole time. So if it's like, OK, cool, there's an emergency even during a pandemic. We drive, baby. Fuck the airline. We'll get there in like four hours. I'll know? ride a fucking horse. Yeah. Like it'll it'll happen. Yeah. But I can't do that if I'm in Texas. So that was another one. And uh, yeah, we looked at, like you said, Henderson, Summerlin. Well, we didn't really look at Henderson because we just didn't we, care to. We just it was fell just, in love with Summerlin the minute Yeah, we got Summerlin there. just felt like the new hawk chicken town that we were like, oh, shit. Okay, this is more promising. It's a newer city. It was just prettier. And and honestly, I really wanted to hate it. Like, as soon as we considered it, I was trying to look for any excuse to hate having to move it. And I was just, I was ready to just make it work out here. I'm like, fuck it. We're going to lose a lot, a lot of money. But that's just the cost that you pay for being in such a beautiful state. But then when I got there, I'm like, holy shit. A lot of this already feels like Glendora. Like, yeah. it didn't feel like I wasn't in, I mean, it feels like you're not in California, specifically L.A., because it feels like the Southwest. Yeah, but it was, I mean, that's how we live right now. We're next to the mountains. Everything's very small, quaint. Um, it has a small city feel to it. Summerlin was the same thing. It did. There was no hustle and bustle. It's very communi- uh, community driven. Like there's a lot of like parks everywhere. They have a really top notch uh, high school, I think, right mm-hmm. next to us. And then a lot of the private schools are really, really good. Uh, there's like this water park right around the corner, which is like, all family friendly stuff. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah, it seems even like it seems even more family friendly than uh, Glendora. And it's also we found our house. Um, We got a lot of bang for the buck. It's in a gated community. So um, if people want to dookie on our house, they can. It's going to be harder. You could dookie on the wall. There's security in the front now. Yeah. So that's really, really cool. And like, yeah, like because it's master plan, like almost every couple of neighborhoods, they build a big old giant park. And their parks are covered, you know, for the sun, which is really, really cool because we care about Taika. Like, that's one of the reasons why we can't even take. But it's so hot over there. Yeah. One of the reasons we can't take Taika to go play here is when it was hundreds, we also couldn't take them. But then our parks aren't covered, you know, so it's cool to have a covered park and play with them. And like we were trying to find every reason to hate it. But like we we just fell in love with it. It was really cool. Yeah, it was. And I really appreciate you like constantly checking back with me. Because it's a big move. We're uprooting ourselves. It is a big move. But I think I think couple couples kind of in a relationship, we tend to if it makes sense to us, we check in once. Hey, are you cool with it? Yes. And then you kind of let it let that thought and idea marinate a little bit. And sometimes I mean, not everyone's good at communicating. We're not the best at communicating. Sometimes we're not best. We're not. We're not we don't even know how we feel sometimes. Yeah. So like letting it marinate and then just kind of like having an unsettled feeling and not really knowing if you should bring it up or like you might be, you know, hindering, you know, you, your uncertainty might hinder the relationship or the future plan. So then you feel bad and you don't want to bring it up. So it was really cool that you were down to check in uh, with me a couple of times. And I really appreciated that. Like for me, once I make a decision, it's I'm, I'm pretty set like. Because I sit and I think about it for so long, I, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty confident once I say yes, let's do it or no, we can't. Like, it's pretty hard for me to go back on that just because I've done so much thinking about it. Yeah. And just really trying to view everything from multiple angles. And um, yeah, since the beginning, it just felt like the best move. Like I said, intuitively, like it was just, it just, everything felt right. Yeah. Aside from like the, like, the more lo- logical ways of looking at it, like you were saying, like Vegas already feels familiar. It's almost like, you know, a lot of people in New York live in New Jersey. Like that's how Vegas felt to L.A. or a lot of people um, in San Francisco live in the Bay or like if Mississippi and Alabama. Like it, it just already had this Vegas, L.A. like sister city feel to it. So it, it felt like it didn't feel like such a huge change. Yeah, it didn't. Other than just the emotional part where I'm saying I'm leaving my whole roots. Our friends. Yeah, like all of it, you know, like it's just everything's brand new. But and it's I'm, also a 45 minute flight away. It is. And then I also think about like Tycho, right? I'm like, damn, how is his upbringing going to be different than mine? I mean, it's going to definitely be better because I grew up with fucking people doing drive bys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like every other night. Yeah. So it's already going to be better. But I'm just like, I don't know. L.A. people just have a different vibe, right? Like. People from L.A. are already so different from people from San Diego, from people Mm -hmm. from the Bay Area. Like, it's just a different vibe. So I'm like, how is this? How is he going to be, you know, when he grows up? I don't know. This is shit that I don't 
I'm not dwelling on, but these are like little thoughts that kind of inset my mind here and there. But before we say anything else, let me just introduce our final sponsor. Shout outs to our sponsor, Manscaped. And Manscaped just dropped a brand new product. They're a weed whacker, nose and ear hair trimmer. If you're like me and you have these stupid freaking nose hairs that pop out here and there and you don't want to be plucking them the way that I do. And sometimes I pluck the wrong one and I'm freaking sneezing for like the next 30 minutes. He sticks his index finger and his thumb entirely up his nose and then he starts pulling it. Yeah. And then sometimes um, I don't even know that I have it and it just uncurls out and it's Ah. now sticking out now. This weed whacker, you can do your regular maintenance hygiene and clean it all up so you look presentable and you don't have like this squiggly squaggle thing that makes you want to sneeze yeah, all the us freaking women, time. We notice all that stuff. So please maintain it, please. Yeah. And so it's super high quality. Their premium Manscaped weed whacker uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. So it wow. cuts really fast. It's not going to pull on it. It's just going to go whoo. I used it personally so I know how it feels because some of the other ones that aren't as good, it'll pull on it and it's like, wait, I might as well just pluck it thing because you're plucking it for me anyways. And it's intelligently contoured design. It enhances the trimming experience and it is waterproof, which makes easy uh, makes it easy for operation and cleaning, just like your lawnmower. So you can do it in the shower and get yourself nice and cleaned up. And right now you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code BAIL, B-E-A-W, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the code BAIL, B-E-A-W, and go whack those weeds, baby. And we're back. Yeah, so I, I, I think about these things. But yeah, like I was saying, I really appreciated that you were down to check in again. And um, did I ever check in with you? Yeah, I think, I so. think Well, I don't think I had to because you're just so excited. You're just like, I can't wait to leave. I can't no, wait. I, I, well, actually, because I only share the excitement with you, but I have moments of doubt and moments of cold feet. Because mm. like for me, like I haven't had those yet. I try not to be my own cheerleader. I like cause to, for me to make a sound decision. I like to whatever I put on the table. Now I immediately play devil's advocate and be my enemy and start oh, shitting cool. on my parade. And then um, that kind of really tells me like whether I should do something or not do something, right? That's why I take things into like a like careful consideration. And every time I try to shit on Vegas, it just bolsters the argument of why we should leave California and go to Vegas. Like I was like, um, like, I even looked up, I think, population numbers. And we have roughly 2 million people in LA alone. And we have... Uh, Where did they all go? And we have around 2 million people... In the fucking freeway. In all of Nevada. So obviously the traffic is going to be way different if you have more people in a congested just one city compared to the whole state. Yeah. You know, so like even so even with the argument of like, oh, but there's so many people leaving California, like Nevada or Texas or Idaho or Utah, it's going to just be the next California. I'm like, it's going to take a long time, especially if there's only two million people in the entire state. Yeah. So just stuff like that makes me feel good because I also don't want to move over and over and over again. So when I'm tr- when I'm thinking about moving, I'm thinking about the next five, 10 oh, years. Oh, that's awesome that you do that. Because for me, I'm not like that. For me, I'm like, nothing's permanent. Nothing's forever. Even though we did call it our forever home, I just know that nothing's forever. Like that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, moving is not a big deal. Yes, it's a big hassle. It's costly. Yeah. But is it, is it, are you, is your state ever permanent? Like is, is where you're at your permanent place and you can't move anymore? Like, no. So I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, we move out there. I hate it. What do I do? Do I stay there? No, you just fucking move where you don't hate it. That's what's cool. Yeah. That's one thing I really love about you where I think you keep a very practical mind. So it's not like this emotional tie to something, right? It's like, let's try it. And then we can go back. Yeah. It's not like this is the last burger you're ever going to eat. <laughs> right. Yeah, let's try this new burger place. Not good. I'll go back to what we love, In-N-Out. Yeah. And guess what? Nevada has In-N-Out too, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nevada has a lot of things. Yeah, so I think for me, that's why... If I ever had cold feet, it kind of went away immediately. Like as soon as that thought came in, it yeah. went out immediately because I'm like, all right, well, what's the worst case? You come back. Yeah. The worst case scenario is literally us moving to Vegas and saving extra money on the state income tax. And then now we have even more money to, <laughs> to come, come back, back and buy an even better house for Taika. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the only thing that I was kind of scared about was the fact that your dad was so willing to move so quickly. Yeah. That I was like. Shout outs to my dad. He's such a ride or die guy. I love yeah, him. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah. That like. I used to hate him and I love him. That was the only thing that kept 
ruminating, like that thought kept like circling my mind over and over and over again. Because when it comes to us three right now, because Tyke is not in school, he doesn't have his roots yet. Yeah. And I can still, we can still move and it's not going to. And that's why that's a timing him. thing too. Like um, we had Vegas talks literally when um, we were buying our first house. And then we were just kind of considering everything. And at that time, it oh, was. Yeah, it, that was like, we thought about it for at least two years before we moved into our house. Yeah. So we we actually, I think we've been thinking about it for maybe three or four years. So at that time, it made the most, the best move to move to our Monterey Park house. And then um, now that it came back up again, we're like, if we're going to do it, because we don't want Taika to like change schools and change surroundings, we want him to have some roots. This was the time to do it. So timing wise, this was like the perfect time to for like right before he starts school, um, he gets to go to a school instead of like starting the school. And then we pull him out and he has to make brand new friends. You know, so that would suck. Yeah, right. Um, so. The thing that kept circling my mind over and over again was the fact that your dad was so willing to move and he was willing to move almost immediately yeah. after us yeah. that I'm like, oh shit, now I'm very responsible for your dad, yeah. you know? And I didn't want to waste his time because I know once your roots, like he's he's way older than us, right? Yeah. Like he's like in his late sixties. Yeah. So his roots are way deeper. He He's already set in his ways. He has his routine. He has his, you know, his rituals and, and his friends and everything that he does on a daily um, that, that's why it was so much more profound to know that he was willing to throw all that away and start from scratch. But because of that, my responsibility as his daughter-in-law came in and I'm like, fuck, when it comes to just us three, I don't care. I'm like, we can get up, move as many times as we need to until we're the happiest we can be yeah. or until we're satisfied. Yeah. But now that I have your dad, you know, to, to look after, I'm like, I can't do that to your pop. Yeah. You know, so even that was like the biggest consideration for me where I'm like, wait, Let's wait for him not to let's not have him move just yet. We can fly him out like every quarter, every three months or something. Maybe yeah. even every month he can come and see Tyka or yeah. he can stay with us for a month. You know, we can make it work where he doesn't have to move everything. Yeah. And then we hate it. And then he has to move everything back. Like that's the fucking worst. Yeah. You know, so we really tried to think about every possible angle here. And after doing all of that, it still feels right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the biggest takeaway here and the reason why we're sharing it with with you guys is never to. And I know you guys know this about the, us, but for anyone new here, we never do any of this stuff or share any of these things to ever boast about anything. We always do I it. I do. Fine. I like floss I like a motherfucker. Yeah. Um, we always do it. That's just why I wear so these that, high quality bottle of shirts because these are the best shirts you can buy. Yeah. With lint right at the collar that I've been staring at all this whole time. Um, it's a Gucci lint though. We share it with you so that hopefully you guys can learn from our mistakes or from our successes. And if there's any insider stuff that you guys know, or if you've already been ahead, like you're three, four steps ahead of us, share this information, dude. We're all a community and I want to learn from you guys and, and hopefully you guys can learn from us. But the biggest takeaway, if anything at all, is that you are the fucking king and queen of your kingdom. And your kingdom is your body, is 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 your immediate family and your friends. That's your fucking kingdom. And at all costs, you should protect that. You should nurture that. You should take care of that. And you should always be happy wherever it is that you're that you're going, you know, or that you, where you're at. So if you're not happy where you're currently at, then, hey, we got to move our kingdom to somewhere where it's going to be fitting to our lifestyle. Like your situation is never permanent. Yeah, you know? never, ex never um, accept unsatisfactory circumstances yeah absolutely so like let's say you got like the craziest allergies and you live next to a cat farm like move where there's Kill no, all the cats no move I'm just kidding. to there's no I love cats cats you know yeah and i think when it comes to like um medical issues it's obviously very easy but i think in terms of everything that you want to plan like whatever you think is going to help you live your best life plan accordingly and that's what we did and yeah. uh and so our best life is going to be, unfortunately, it's not going to be where the fat, juicy Cuban asses are. It's going to be in, in Vegas. With the one fat, juicy Mexican ass. Oh, yeah. That you get to call your wife, you trash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah. So you know I'm peeking over the wall, see if there's any Cuban juicy asses around. Shut up. All right. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, we love you guys. Love you guys so much. 
And thank you to our sponsor, Manscaped. Just remember that you're going to get 20% off and free shipping with code BEAW, B-E-A-W, at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Don't forget to use code BEAW. So what are you waiting for? Go whack your weeds. I love them so much. <laughs> and shout out to barbellbrigade.com. We are getting ready for our biggest sale of the year, Black Friday. So make sure you go to our website, enter your email, into our newsletter because we will give you the updates there first. You guys will have the first access and we are having a huge restock on some of our most exclusive stuff. So if there's any drops that you missed out, make sure you go there and we're going to have a buy more, save more sale, which means the more things that you buy, the steeper the discount. So make sure you're prepared for all of that. Happy shopping. Happy Black Friday. See you guys next time. Bye. Peace.